If you've seen enough of my videos and my website, you know that I love lamb, and today is no different. What I want to do today is another recipe from a restaurant magazine. I've explained those before. Those are magazines that go out just to businesses. You don't buy them off the magazine rack at the grocery store. And this is a restaurant recipe. I believe it comes out of Chicago for a lamb chops that are seared to put those really nice grill marks on them, those bar marks they call them. And it's served with a salsa verde, a green salsa. It looks like it's gonna be really good and it'll give me excuse for using my cast iron grill griddle on the top of my stove. So let's get into the ingredients I'm going to use. I have here two racks of lamb. These are about two pounds each, total of 16 chops. You need these at room temperature. So take them out of the refrigerator a little bit early. And then for my griddle grill, I'm gonna be using safflower oil. And the reason why I'm using safflower oil is because this has a high smoke point, 510 degrees Fahrenheit, 266 degrees Celsius. I know a lot of people like to use extra virgin olive oil, but it starts to burn at about 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 191 degrees Celsius. So safflower oil makes a lot more sense. I can get my griddle up a lot hotter. And then for my salsa verde, I have two cloves garlic, one half teaspoon salt, four anchovy fillets. Don't be nervous about working with anchovy fillets. Anchovies are to cooking what fine perfume is to a lady. It can only make perfection better. And then I have one tablespoon of capers. Those are rinsed. Six olives pitted. These are kalamatas because that's what I've got. And then I have the leaves from about 12 sprigs of parsley and the leaves from about three to four sprigs of basil. I have two tablespoons marsala, one half cup to three quarters of a cup, that's 125 to 175 roughly, milliliters of extra virgin olive oil. I'll know how much when I need when I get there. I'm gonna start with half a cup and I'll add more if I need to make my verde salsa a little bit more oily. And then finally salt and pepper to taste. I put parentheses around the salt because I already have salt going into this. I'll taste my salsa. If it needs a little bit more salt, I'll adjust. So those are the ingredients that I'm working with. I'm gonna be doing something I haven't done in a very long time, decades. I'm gonna be using my mortar and pestle. The recipe says to grind these ingredients in a bowl with the back of a large spoon. I think you could do this just as easily in one of those small mini food processors. So I'm gonna start by putting my garlic cloves in there and my salt and I'm gonna start grinding these up and just mashing them until I get this down to a small paste. Not a small paste, but a smooth paste. Okay, I'm satisfied that that's ground up pretty well. I mean, it's not absolutely smooth like facial cream, but it's smooth enough. Now I'm gonna add my anchovy fillets my capers and my olives and the same thing. I'm gonna just start grinding these up and mashing them in. Before I put my basil and parsley in that mortar, I want to break them up really well and I'm gonna be using my Wacker spoon. It's easiest just to do this in a Ziploc bag. Like so. Squeeze the air out, seal it. And then with, you can use a, a flat, a nicely flat hammer, like a, one of those, the flat side of a meat tenderizer. I also have a rubber mallet. And you just wanna basically hit this until you have these leaves all bruised and broken up. That gets the juices out, and that's what flavors your salsa or your pesto. All right, so there are my leaves all nicely bruised. I'm gonna put that in there. And then as well, just grind this in with the pestle. And that's what's gonna make my nice dark green salsa verde. Okay, that's mashed in, but this doesn't need to be a nice smooth paste like the garlic. 
This can be on the coarse side. And then I'm going to transfer that to a bowl. Oh, that looks so beautiful. And the aroma of this. This is going to be a fantastic salsa verde. Okay, so I need this because this is going to make noise. So there is my vegetables there, my leaves and my olives and so forth. I'm going to pour in my masala and stir that in. To work in my olive oil, I'm going to use my little hand mixer here with a whisk. This is sort of like making a vinaigrette. You want to just drizzle the olive oil in steadily while you're whisking that constantly to get the olive oil nicely dispersed in there. You're not going to actually turn it into a mayonnaise, but you want to get that olive oil nicely dispersed in there. I'm going to put in half a cup, so I have three quarters of a cup of olive oil here, and I'll be looking at this when I get this down to a quarter cup. I'll see what I've got, and if I'm happy with it, I'll stop. If not, I'll add a little more olive oil to this. I really want an oily, almost like a pesto here for my lamb. So there is my salsa bird verde, and as you can see, that is nice and oily. I only used half a cup of the oil, so I put the remaining quarter cup back in my oil bottle. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap, put it in the refrigerator, and I can next turn my attention to my lamb. This lamb that I buy is already Frenched, which means the bones have all been trimmed of meat and nicely cleaned. That's called Frenching. That's typically what you do with a rack of lamb. If your lamb isn't cleaned like that and trimmed, you can if you want. You can trim all the flesh and clean up those bones for a nice clean appearance. Now what I want to do here is I want to divide these into double chops and the reason why is because to get the grill marks that I want, those marks on the um, lamb, I have to get, the, get it really hot and if I work with a thin piece of lamb there's the risk that it's going to cook all the way through and overcook and then be tough. So by working with a thick piece of lamb, by doing double chops, I protect the lamb a little bit while I'm trying to get those grill marks on the outside of the lamb. So I'm going to cut these into double chops by cutting down between the bones like so. So there are my eight chops. I have some coarse sea salt here. I'm going to season these lightly with sea salt. and then grate some pepper over them. And then turn these over and do that again. Here is my cast iron griddle. Obviously it hasn't been heated up yet. Before I heat this up, I want to show you a trick. One of the problems with this particular griddle is it flops around on top of the hobs or grates that are on the stove. One person I saw on the internet even bought some cast iron drain grates that he put on top of his hobs to keep this thing from rocking and flopping around. You don't need to do that. Just turn your grates a little bit so that this is properly supported. I mean, normally it's on there this way, right? I just turn that a little bit. Set that on there. That's not going to go anywhere. It's, it's solid. It's not rocking back and forth. It's fine. Before I heat this, I'm going to oil it with some of my safflower oil. I put two or three tablespoons in a little bowl here, and I'm just going to lightly brush this with oil. My griddle is just now starting to smoke. It's been just over five minutes. I'm going to turn my temperature up to medium high now because once this meat goes on, get that sizzle, it'll start absorbing heat.
Beautiful. Look at that. My meat is on there. My temperature is up. This is the point at which you want to make sure your smoke detectors are disconnected and you have fans running. I have three running because this will set off your smoke detectors. Don't move them for two and a half to three minutes. I'm going to set a timer for two and a half minutes and then I'm going to change those 40 or 90 degrees so that I get the bar marks crossed. So as you can hear, we are really cooking. I got some nice bar marks on there. I turn my temperature down now to medium low because at this point, the final side, I don't really care that much what it looks like, but I want to make sure my meat is cooked properly. And if I need to cook it a little bit slowly, I will. I did put my meat with the fat side down just to sear that fat a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start checking the internal temperature of my chops with a digital thermometer. I want to bring these up to an internal temperature of about 125 for medium rare chops. And then I'm going to get them off the heat and let them rest. After letting that meat rest for a few minutes, I'm going to plate this by putting some of my nice oily salsa verde on my plate. Like so. And then put a beautiful piece of lamb on top. And yes, that is a plane going overhead. Yes, I live near the airport. Let me do a close-up of that so you can see that. It's got beautiful grill marks in it. So there it is. You can see the bar marks in there really nice. That oil is a beautiful green color. It's going to have a nice herbal flavor to it. I did taste that salsa verde, by the way. It didn't need any salt. It was fine the way it is. My last step is to cut into this lamb and see how good it tastes. I'm just so ready to taste this. I mean, I mentioned earlier, I love lamb. I carved a little piece off. I'm going to stir that around oh, in that delicious aroma of that salsa verde. Melt in your mouth tender. Those herbs just have so much flavor to them, which is perfect to go with lamb because although a rack of lamb is mild compared to some cuts of lamb, it still has a bit of a bit of a gamey flavor to it. This is a flavor combination that works together perfectly. So excuse me, I'm gonna go enjoy my grilled lamb with salsa verde. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the homepage or in the recipe archive.